What's up everybody, Funnel Doc here. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how to optimize your sales funnel and some of the things you should be focusing on when you do. See you inside. Some dude, Jeffrey M. Benek, he just um, got a quick funnel tattoo. <laughs> What's up everybody, Funnel Doc here. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to optimize your sales funnel. This is one of the most common problems that people come to me with. They're like, what should my numbers be? What should I be focusing on? What should I be changing? And today we're gonna to cover all this in today's video. The first thing you wanna think about when optimizing your funnel is not what most people think, which is closest to the sale you actually wanna start farthest away from the sale. So if you're doing a post or running an ad, you wanna think first of all of how you're speaking to that person at the farthest spot away, the first point of engagement. Now, when they shift from let's say an ad to an opt-in page, you wanna make sure that they're congruent. Very often people will have one headline on an ad and a different headline on the opt-in page. Realistically, when you're running ads, the ad should do the job of selling the person and the opt-in page is just getting the actual information and reconfirming the ad at this point. Far too often people will come in and they'll be, oh, they'll curiosity based and they'll get all this, they'll get all this um, like almost FOMO to some degree and they'll get clicks but the problem is not all clicks are created equal. So now you've got someone to click because they were curious, but it really has nothing to do with what's going on on the actual opt-in. Good ads will pretty much sell or almost exactly mimic what's on the opt-in page. It's just the, think about it, the ad itself is getting the click. And if it's done right, it's sold them enough that when they get to the opt-in page for a lead magnet, they should really just be reconfirming everything they've already discovered before on the ad and, and, re, and giving them validation to give you their name, email, and phone number if you go phone number. Now, there's you want things to be, um, also it's it may sound silly, but when you're optimizing things, going from an ad to even an opt-in page or a sales page, you need to have congruency or what we call ad sense. It smells the way sense like it smells. And you want it to be very similar. The, like I was saying, the, the headlines are the same. The people in the images, the coloring, the coloring, the color is all the same. Uh, you want it to be very smooth and almost, like I said, be a reproduction, not exactly of the actual ad itself. So same images, same fonts, same colors, same headlines. Because here's the deal, if this one over here is like, hey, learn how to lose weight in 12 weeks, and then they get to the opt-in and it's like six pack abs, they're not congruent, they don't smell right, something's off. And even though they're in the same area, weight loss or fitness, because they were trying to figure out how to, to get the weight loss formula, and now you're talking about six pack abs, they're not gonna opt in. So instead, this needs to be talking about six pack abs, how the program is gonna be, what you're gonna get, yada, yada. And then when they get to the actual opt-in page, it just reconfirms everything in the ad. Now, another thing is, when you're doing most opt-ins, the industry standard is like 25 to 30% is considered good. If you're not doing say 40 to 50%, I consider it bad. Like that's what I consider for my funnel doc opt-ins. Um, usually 40%, 50% or even higher. I've gone up to 80% before for opt-ins with over a thousand people opting in at over 80%. So, um, but that is one of the things you wanna focus on is the smell from even if it's a post and you're taking it somewhere, they need to be congruent. So when it comes to optimizing these things, don't focus on colors and buttons and things like that. Start big, start with headlines, start with images, things that are gonna grab their attention because you gotta get that hook in them to get them to be able to read, to be able to, to go far forward on your funnel. 
So when you're thinking about split testing, don't start with silly stuff like buttons and colors and things like that. Start first of all with the hook and the headline. That's gonna be the number one thing that's gonna grab their attention, optimize that. What would be the next thing to grab their attention? Optimize that. What's gonna the next thing to convert them? Start there. And don't ever optimize more than one thing at a time. If I change the image and the headline, how do I know which one is making the conversion happen? Only split test one thing at a time. It's a very common uh, problem that people have. have. They, I'll see people's funnels and they'll be like, split test. I'm like, so what are you testing? And like, yeah, the button, the, the image, this headline we've got down here, we're instead now we've got these blocked on. Like, how do you know what's working? One thing at a time. And you want to do what I like to call, or Russell taught back in the day, uh, the rule of a thousand. You really want either a thousand people to visit something or spend a thousand dollars worth of ads before you start tweaking stuff. Because even a hundred, two hundred, three hundred people visiting is really not a big enough sample size to you know if something's working. So always remember the rule of a thousand, either the thousand dollars in ad spend or a thousand people visiting the page. Now, Next thing, when they go to the sales page, usually you're looking at two to 5% of the sales page that actually converts. So when you're focusing on things, you, again, you want to start farthest away because think about this. If we're going simple opt-in to a sales page, it's the difference of if I run 10,000 people to that sales page and it's doing the industry standard to say 30%, and then we look at the funnel doc standard of 50%, it's a difference of 5,000 people or 3,000 people seeing the page. Now, let's just say for easy math, 10% is converting on the sales page. That's a difference between 500 sales and 300 sales. You can see, and if you start there, you're going to get a bigger amount of people. You're going to open your floodgate more and more people are going to get to each stage. So when you're optimizing, start the farthest way. Start at your opt-in. And then if you have a self-liquidating offer, you go there. And then if you have your core offer there, and then if you have upsell there and a downsell or a cross-sell and go that direction, don't go this direction, go that direction. Go start from the point of entry and then optimize each step of the way. So, and again, like I said, focus on one primary thing at a time and think big, grand ideas. Don't think small yet. Don't think of tweaking a little like what's on the actual button yet because if the headline sucks, they're never gonna see the button. Another thing when it comes to opt-ins, keep the curiosity up. If you've sold them in the ad, you don't need to put another whole sales page just for an opt-in on an opt-in. You're only trying to get their name, email, and phone number. So you really only get have to give enough information to give to make them want to exchange a name, email, and phone number. So hopefully that makes sense and that helps you on how you should optimize your funnel. So no matter what type of funnel it is, whether it's a webinar funnel, a complete sales funnel with, uh, with upsells and downsells, whether it's just an opt-in funnel going to a SLO, it doesn't really matter. You always want to start farthest away from the endpoint and think about the biggest things first that will cause the biggest amount of uh, grabbing the person's attention or causing the biggest shift. Don't start small. That's one of the biggest things that people are focusing down on the FAQ at the bottom and split testing different questions on that. Like that's the very end of the funnel. They've got to get all the way to the end of that and still be interested to even care about the FAQ. So start at the top of the funnel again at the top of your sales page, the top of your um, opt-in page, wherever it is, start at the top and then focus down at the bottom because if the top sucks, they're never going to get there. So again, hopefully this helped you in optimizing your funnel and understanding the basics of what you should be looking at and how to really split test your offers and your different sales page so that they're actually effective. If you found value in this, please give me a thumbs up, smash that notification bell so you'll know when all my next videos come out and be sure to subscribe. It costs you nothing and I'm gonna give you a thumbs up because I like you so much for doing it. So thanks a lot. Have a great day. Funnel Doc out. Income and impact, baby. Go out there and make some.